Meanwhile, he's up to his old mea culpa, mea culpa shenanigans yet again. Yep, Justin Trudeau. <laughs> he just can't help himself. He's like a fat kid locked inside a candy store. He just can't stop saying, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ha! Elton John once saying that sorry seems to be the hardest word. Oh, Elton never met our Justin. Since Justin took office as PM, he's said sorry to the gay community. He said sorry to the natives. He's even said sorry to supposed war crimes that happened in Canada at a time when the Dominion of Canada did not exist as a nation. <laughs> now, how sorry is that? But I worry because, you know, at this rate, Trudeau is going to run out of victim groups to apologize to. Indeed, I wouldn't be surprised if Trudeau were to show up at the Royal Tyrell Museum in Drumheller to apologize to the dinosaur community. After all, those supersized critters experienced their extinction event millions of years ago, and I think Trudeau could really dine out on apologizing to those assorted raptors and T-Rexes that frolicked upon territory that in the far future would come to be known as Alberta. We're talking supersized genocide here, and it happened on Canadian soil, and better yet, Justin doesn't have to say that dreaded J word that he omitted twice from his Holocaust commemoration speeches, unless he says Jurassic or something. I think that J word is okay. And better yet for Trudeau, he could turn this apology into a see, I told you so moment regarding climate change. Attention Climate Barbie, get your pom-poms out. Time to cheer on our fearless leader as he apologizes and offers a sermon to boot. Say, have you ever noticed that Trudeau is so keen to apologize for the actions of others that occurred once upon a time in a Canada far, far away? He never apologizes for his own odious actions in the here and now, be it the way he treated Jody Wilson-Raybould or how he groped Rose Knight. No, apparently those actions don't call for an apology. Rather, for Justin, these incidents are learning experiences. Ah, not for him, just for the rest of us schlubs. I wonder why. By the way, does anyone out there know how to spell sociopath? So, what pray tell is next up on the Trudeau Apology Palooza Me So Sorry Tour? Well, the PM recently announced he'll be saying sorry to the Canadian-Italian community for the way some were interned during the Second World War. You know, when we were at war with Italy? Oh, by way of clarification, he didn't actually say sorry. He offered a pre-apology to the formal apology. There's no firm date set yet for that mea culpa, but I'm thinking it'll come post Labor Day, you know, so his apology is front and center in the, and in the minds of Canada's paisanos once we get closer to the federal election. Of course, that's assuming my Italian friends will be buying what Justin Trudeau is selling. One Italian who definitely is not buying into the program is Globe and Mail columnist Patrick Luciani, who penned a superb piece entitled Canadians of Italian Descent Don't Need Trudeau's Apology. Here's a snippet, quote, Canada was not wrong or malicious in its intention to protect the country in a time of war. To have done otherwise would have shown an extraordinary dereliction of duty to Canada and its people, end quote. Now, I'm sure Trudeau is scoffing at that, I mean, after all, what does Patrick Luciani know about the Canadian-Italian community? Even if Patrick Luciani is a member of the Canadian-Italian community. But hey, Justin is the Prime Minister, well, at least for another four months. So perhaps we should take guidance from our Ottawa Oracle and collectively come up with apologies to the Italian community too. I'll get the ball rolling, folks. Okay, for starters, I want to personally apologize to the Italian community for saying mean things about them, like FIAT is an acronym for Fix It Again, Tony. Yeah, granted, FIATs were crap cars in the 70s, but they've turned the corner, and FIAT even owns Chrysler these days. Another apology to the Italians. I'm so very sorry for mistakenly believing that Kraft Dinner was Italian food, or for that matter, 
that it even qualified as pasta. And in this post Me Too era in which we reside, I want to apologize to the Italian community for lusting over pictures of Gina Lola Brigida and Sofia Loren and having the most wicked and impure thoughts. Oh, Sophia Loren, the way she moved, the way she grooved, and those big, beautiful eyes. Oh, mamma mia. But I digress, and I apologize. And finally, I apologize to the Italian community for making so many vicious Italian jokes in my youth. Like, did you hear about the guy who was half Italian and half Polish? He wants to beat somebody up, but he can't remember who. Or, what is the proper name for an Italian suppository? That would be an innuendo. Or, what do you call an Italian with an IQ of 190? Sicily. Yes, that was hate speech, folks. And I deeply apologize for it. But, speaking of jokes, I think my Italian friends, of which I have many, know when they're being bamboozled. They know when they're being led down the garden path by some wannabe wise guy. I think they are less interested in apologies and more interested in, oh, I don't know, competency and government, like the rest of us. Indeed, if you were Justin's summer school teacher, what letter grade would you give our Munja Cake Prime Minister in terms of his most recent virtue signaling exercise? Um, how about an F? Yeah, F, as in Fungula. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, if you liked that video, please like and subscribe and never miss another Rebel video.